Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed to be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires know, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. In Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
found in your worship bulletin responsibly by whole works. Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing, him, sing praises to him, him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and strive. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. He led out his people with silver and gold. In all their tribes there was not one that stumbled. Egypt was glad of their going, because they were afraid of thy one. He spread out a cloud for covering, and a fire to give light in the night season. They asked his quails to hear, and he satisfied them with bread from heaven. He opened the rock, and water flowed, so the river ran in the dry places. For God remembered his holy word, and Abraham his servant. So he led forth his people with gladness, his chosen with shouts of joy. He gave his people the lands of the nations, and they took the fruit of others' toil, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Hallelujah. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. To me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better, but to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so, they may, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or I am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I have, still have. The word of the Lord. And be to God. Mm. So they went. 
When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing idle around. And he said to them, why are you standing here all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. by which most of us live our lives. 
You know, we believe that the front of the line is the best place to be. We will get the new couch. This is exactly what the disciples believed also. For if we look, would look at the paragraph just before Jesus tells this parable, we find that Peter has just asked Jesus what he and the other disciples can expect in the way of reward for their loyalty to him. Peter points out, you know, that they've given up everything to follow him. What will he give them in return? Jesus promises them 12 thrones in the world to come. Then says, but many that are first will be last, and the last first. Then he tells the parable of the laborers in the vineyard. Now, they still don't seem to get the message, because right after Jesus tells this story, the mother of James and John, she goes to Jesus and asks Jesus to give her sons the best thrones in the kingdom. One on his left and one on his right. And Jesus says to her, you don't know what you are asking. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. My throne, Jesus says, will not be made of gold and silver, but of wood and nails in the shape of a cross. For I did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give my life as a ransom for many. Well, the disciples were each trying to be first in line when the doors opened. And Jesus clearly said by his words, is life, death, and resurrection, being first is not at all what God is about. See, the servant God is about outrageous generosity. Are you envious because I am generous? Asked the owner of the vineyard. Yes, we are. And if we're not, then we're not hearing this parable because it rubs us the wrong way. We carry around the notion of what is fair and what is not, and this story offends what we think of generosity. Yet, this is the, exactly the sort of fairness you might expect from a God who thinks that it is a good idea to get crucified as the answer to human sin. And God is not fair. And God, and God loves to reverse the systems we set up to explain why God should love some of us more than others. By starting at the end of the line with the least and the last, God lets us know that his ways are not our ways. And that if we want to understand God's ways, then we might have to question our own notions of what is fair and why do we get so upset when we are not first. Now, in our consumer society, there is considerable confusion about what exactly God has promised us. I mean, we hear it. Some would argue that God promises health and prosperity. Others might say that God promises that those who are faithful will be rewarded for their work. Yet when we look, you know, at the theology of the cross, it is about the blood shed and the fact that God sacrificed God's self to atone for our sins. And it is also a promise that we will have the privilege, because of our faith, to share in Christ's suffering and struggles. The God who promises our salvation is a crucified God for whom the walk to freedom involves entering into rather than avoiding the desert. And a good example, you know, are the Philippians. We, beginning to read in the book of Philippians, if you Notice we spent a great deal of time in the book of Romans. We read through most of that of the book of Romans. 
in the last month or so. Now we're starting in the book of Philippians, who were faithful followers. I mean, they, they had kept their unity and held steadfast against false teaching. They might have expected, you know, their faithfulness to carry them beyond suffering. Not so, says Paul. In fact, God has generously granted them not only faith, but also the privilege of sharing in Christ's suffering. The promise is not about earning rewards. Paul sees his suffering. He's in jail now. And he sees it as a way of exalting Christ. So this text from Philippians today is an invitation for us to focus on hope, to find joy in the midst of all of life's circumstances so that God may be glorified. Gospel living is not necessarily about finding an easy way out. It is about learning to see hope and possibilities even in the darkest moments our lives. So what does it mean to live faithfully in a world like ours? Faith is the willingness to trust when God must remind us, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Faithfulness has to do with welcoming God's outrageous generosity on those who come later than we did, have not followed as long and as hard as we have. And if we begin to seek to know God's ways, we can see the goodness of God as it is given to us and others. I mean, the back of the line starts to look pretty good. For when we see God's goodness to others, to people we love, our friends, our family, you know, our colleagues, but most especially to those we do not think deserve such generosity, then we see the goodness of God for the wonderful miracle that it is. See, God is not fair. God is generous. Because God is not fair, then there's a chance that we will get paid more than we are worth. That we will get more than we deserve. That we will make it through the doors even when we are last in line. Not because of who we are, but because of who God is. If we look at this world through the parable of the workers in the vineyard, we will discover the truth. All of us, no matter who we are, and when we came to know God, God loves us and invites us into the kingdom. The first and the last are offered salvation. Those at the front of the line and those at the back of the line. So what if the manager opened the doors of the new Ikea store and reverse the order, you know, asking the last in line to be the first in the doors. And those at the beginning of the line began to cheer. That is God's outrageous generosity. And may we strive to be the same.
departed for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, Jesus was crucified in the conscious pilot, he suffered death and was spared. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Prayers of the people, let us pray. Come all who labor in the vineyard of God's grace, let us join together in the offering of our prayers, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. That our commitment to justice may extend to those we employ in our households and businesses, paying a fair and living wage clarifying expectations, and seeking honest work in return. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may bridle our tongue against the urge to complain, channeling our energy to generously participate in the building up of the community of faith. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may receive the sacramental meal of the Eucharist as a foretaste of God's heavenly banquet responding to its grace by helping those who are the weakest among us. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our homes may be schools of religious faith, where God's loving presence is revealed through personal sacrifice, ongoing forgiveness, and mutual joy. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may rejoice in the beauty of the season and honor the extraordinary diversity of plant and animal life. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially Kim Van Boyce, may join in the company of the angels and archangels, all the saints in heaven, and rest in the blessed arms of him who is the first and the last, Jesus our Redeemer. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. With the steadfast love of God to guide us, we continue our prayers. We pray for our Bishop, Marty, our Diocese, and the Anglican Communion. We pray for peace among all nations, especially in the Middle East, the Ukraine, and in Sudan. We pay, pray for the sick, especially the lowers and the martyrs, Dave Keenan, Edith Ann Power, Donald Williams, Jane Orsick, Reba Carr, P.D. Way, Mary and Ralph Somerville, Anne Belay, Pat Trantham, Dr. Kapasev, uh, Donald Field, and Patsy Hendricks. Lord God, in your presence, none of us can boast, and all must ask for mercy. Grant us the grace to see what needs to be done, and the wisdom and resources to do it. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have not done done. We have not loved you, Lord, our Lord. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on me. Forgive you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand for the peace. 
to have been taken. So if you would like to go to this banquet, I have tickets for six more people, two ladies, probably to attend, men too, if they'd like. Um, so please let me know. It's a lot of fun, um, and it's a great benefit to help uh, the shelter here in town. It won't cost you anything, but it'll be a nice night out. Unless you want to, they're going to have what, um, things you can sign up to buy an auction. Or, yeah. A silent auction. Yeah, they're going to have a silent auction. And, so I, and I know there's a lot of good, good, good things there to sign up for. Um, we're going to try something a little different. I, I would like to try something a little different when it comes to Bible study. Um, I know that many of you are not able to come to a certain time on a certain day um, to participate in a study. But would you be interested? I have this wonderful study. It's called, maybe you've read about it, Grace Note. It's called An Odd Couple, uh, Jonah and Ruth. And remember Jonah? He was the one who was swallowed by the whale. And, and the story of Ruth, which is a, a beautiful love story. Um, and this is called Not Couple. And so I was thinking, what about if, if you were interested, um, I think the book is like $10 or something like that. But besides that, if you were interested in this study, that you did it on your own time, and we set up kind of a something on Facebook or um, uh, a, a blog of some sort, and we just start studying it together, but not together. And those that could come together, we could do that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'd love to come together and have, uh, put, have a time that we can meet and do this study. But I'm also realistic to know that, not, you know, that's hard for most of us. So if you would think you might be interested in doing something like that, I think it would be kind of fun to try it. You know, um, there's a lot of uh, churches doing the Bible challenge. And they're finding great fun in, you know, maybe they check in with their group. They have a group, it's a blog or a, uh, some sort of thing, and they check in so you can tell what I know about this stuff. But they check in and, and talk about what they're learning and discussing. So let me know if you think you might be interested in that or interested in being a part of a group that meets uh, together uh, to study. Any birthdays? Chris, come on out. First, I, I do want to, don't want to forget to thank Mother Joe for being here today. It's so good to see you. We're, we're so thankful you could be here when Jim's son here. Thank you so much.
with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory be to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal element, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through the prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, you have reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. For you are a generous God, full of grace. You call each of us as laborers in your vineyard and give to all the full measure of reward gained for us through Jesus Christ our Lord. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending end. Father, 
through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go ahead.